All right, let's look at what happened in seasons one through five of Outlander. Our story begins in 1945 when married couple Frank and Claire go on vacation to Inverness. They are attempting to reconnect after World War II kept them separated. Frank is a soldier and Claire is a nurse. While Frank discusses his family history with his friend Reverend Wakefield, Claire explores the history and traditions of the area, leading her to the stones of Cragna Dune. When Claire touches the stones, she is transported back in time to 1743. After an awful encounter with Frank's ancestor, Captain Jonathan Blackjack Randall, she is picked up by a group of Highlanders. Enter the men in kilts we've all been waiting for. She uses her knowledge as a nurse to aid an injured Scot named Jamie Fraser, and they take her to Clan Mackenzie at Castle Leoch. Fearing she is an English spy, Clan Warchief Dougal takes Claire to his brother, the Laird Colum Mackenzie. Colum decides to keep her, against her will, as a healer for the clan. He tasks Rupert, Angus, and Murtog to take turns watching her. She befriends a local woman named Galus Duncan, who shares some of her medicinal knowledge. We learn that Jamie Fraser, or Red Jamie, is a cousin to the Mackenzies and is a wanted man, both by the law and this pretty young lady named Leary. Claire helps Jamie heal a poisoned child, earning the ire of the local priest who had deemed it a demonic possession, but earning the friendship of the boy's aunt, Mrs. Fitzgibbons. She hears a song about a time traveler giving her hope she may be able to return through the stones that brought her here. Claire plots to escape, but Jamie brings her back. Dougal decides to take her with him to collect rent, and Jamie makes an oath of loyalty to Clan Mackenzie. Dougal leads them through the local areas for rent collection, traveling with the clan lawyer Ned Gowan, who befriends Claire. At night, Claire sees that Dougal uses scars on Jamie's back to raise money for a Jacobite army, a cause which she knows is doomed to fail. Becoming friendly with so many Mackenzies causes Claire to think about the Mackenzie graves she saw at the Memorial of Culloden in the future. A young English soldier sees Claire as captive and takes her from the Highlanders. The English general promises her safe passage to Inverness, but she will be escorted by Blackjack Randall. Remembering their first encounter, Randall is suspicious of Claire and tells her the story of how Jamie got his scars. Dougal shows up and rescues Claire, but he explains that he will have to turn her back in unless she marries Jamie and legally becomes Scottish herself. Claire is torn thinking of Frank back in her own time, but ultimately goes through with the marriage to Jamie. As they get to know each other, she realizes he is a virgin. Wait, you're telling me this man is a virgin? That may be harder to believe than time travel, but it's cool, just unexpected. We see that in the future, Frank is desperately searching for his wife and is near the stones. At a picnic, Claire meets Hugh, a mute old friend of Jamie's, who gives her a dragonfly in amber as a wedding gift. Claire finds herself near the stones as well, and she and Frank think they can hear each other. English troops capture her before she can touch the stones, and she finds herself facing Randall once again. He gets violent and is about to force himself on her when Jamie appears and saves her. The Highlanders return to Castle Leoc, where Jamie acts as peacekeeper between Dougal and Colum. Jamie and Claire fall desperately in love. Leary is upset by their marriage. She tries to seduce Jamie and puts a bad luck charm under their bed. Dougal's wife succumbs to an illness, and he is drunk and inconsolable. Jamie and Murtaugh approach the Duke of Sandringham to lift the price off his head, and he agrees if Jamie is his second in a duel. The duel goes south, and Jamie is injured, but the Duke agrees to the petition. Claire confronts Leary and finds out she got the charm from Galus. When she speaks with Galus, Claire discovers the woman is pregnant with Dougal's baby. Galus' husband suddenly dies at the banquet, and Claire suspects his wife poisoned him. Colum forbids Dougal from being with Galus and exiles him. Claire and Galus are arrested for witchcraft. Leary and the priest testify against them, and they are both found guilty. Jamie attempts to save Claire, but Galus confesses and clears her. During her confession, Galus reveals the devil's mark on her arm, which Claire recognizes as a smallpox vaccine, meaning she is also from the future. The mob takes her away to be burned at the stake. Jamie asks Claire about her similar scar. She reveals that she traveled through time, and he believes her, taking her back to the stones. But having fallen deeply in love with him, she decides not to go back. Jamie takes Claire back to his home, Lollybrock. 
His pregnant sister Jenny and her husband Ian have been running the place in his absence. The siblings butt heads, but Jamie's narrow escape from Redcoats causes them to resolve their differences. Jenny goes into labor, and Claire is sworn to secrecy when there are complications. Claire helps her give birth to a healthy baby girl. Jamie hides his identity when the Watch arrive, but he ultimately agrees to join them in a raid. The group is ambushed, and Jamie is arrested by Redcoats. Claire and Jenny go in search of Jamie. They find out he has escaped. Murtaugh joins Claire, and they travel around the area with Claire performing a song, calling her Sussanac, Jamie's nickname for her, to get his attention. Dougal finds them instead, and tells her that Jamie has been recaptured and awaits execution. She makes a deal with Dougal to marry him in the event of Jamie's death, and takes some of his men to rescue Jamie from Wentworth Prison. Randall is torturing Jamie. Claire manages to get to him, but Randall catches her. Jamie submits to Randall's sadistic whims to gain Claire's freedom. She leaves the back door open, and Murtaugh comes up with a new plan involving lots of cows. The new plan works! Jamie is rescued, and they leave Randall for dead. Jamie suffers from both injuries and the trauma of the experience. Claire fixes up his broken hand, but he struggles with the will to go on. Claire does reach him eventually. They decide that they will sail to France and attempt to meet Charles Stewart and prevent the Battle of Culloden. On the boat to France, Claire tells Jamie that she is pregnant. We see Claire awaken at the Stones in 1948. She is reunited with Frank, who struggles to believe her story about where she's been. She tells him about her marriage and that she is pregnant with Jamie's baby. Eventually, Frank accepts it and promises to raise the child like his own. Back in 1744, Claire and Jamie arrive in France and meet his cousin, Jared Fraser, a known Jacobite. Claire spots signs of smallpox at the docks and causes a huge loss for Le Comte Saint Germain, making an enemy of him. They work for Jared, but secretly plan to stop the Jacobite rebellion. Claire meets Master Raymond at the apothecary. Jamie is introduced to Prince Charles Stuart and earns his trust, but can't talk him out of trying to seize the throne. Really, dude is such a goober who constantly says, mark me. Claire visits with flamboyant Louise and shy Mary Hawkins, who help her score an invite to Versailles, where they run into the Duke of Sandringham. She learns his secretary is Randall's brother Alex, who tells Claire that Randall is still alive, and she debates telling Jamie. Mary and Alex hit it off. Claire starts volunteering at a charity hospital. Still hoping to stop the funding of the Jacobites, Jamie befriends a young boy at a brothel and charges him with picking pockets and gathering intel. He basically adopts the boy and calls him Fergus. They discover the Duke of Sandringham is a key player in funding the rebellion and work to hinder him. Claire and Jamie plan a dinner party to further their cause, and Claire reveals to him that Randall is still alive. Jamie is thrilled because it means he can kill Randall himself. For her safety, Master Raymond has spread a rumor that Claire is La Dame Blanche, a mythical figure said to have supernatural powers. On the way to the party, Murtaugh, Claire, and Mary Hawkins are attacked, and poor Mary is defiled. Murtaugh vows to avenge the attack on the women. The party continues in their absence, and a fight breaks out. Their plan worked, and Charles lost many investors after the party, but he unfortunately found a new one in St. Germain. Claire recognizes Mary's name as one of Frank's ancestors. She attempts to sabotage Mary with Alex to make sure Frank's lineage stays intact for the future. When Randall appears, Jamie challenges him to a duel, but Claire makes him promise not to kill him before Mary has his baby. They sabotage a wine shipment, further setting back Charles's funding. Jamie trusts Murtaugh with Claire's secret of being from the future. Jamie meets Randall to duel, and Claire rushes to stop them from killing each other. Claire sees that she is bleeding and collapses as both men are arrested. Claire tragically loses her baby, who she named Faith, and almost dies herself, but Master Raymond saves her. After recovering, she learns from Fergus that Jamie had acted after discovering Randall violating him. Claire appeals to the king, who makes her judge suspected sorcerers, including Master Raymond and St. Germain. She attempts to save them both, but Raymond poises St. Germain. The king grants Jamie freedom in exchange for intimate time with Claire. Horrible, but at least it's very brief. Once together again, they visit Faith's grave before heading back to Scotland. They return to Lollybrock, which is thriving thanks to Claire's tip to grow potatoes. Jamie questions their plan and decides to back the Jacobite Rebellion again. They meet with his grandfather, Lord Lovett. 
Colum shows up, accompanied by an apologetic Leary, hoping to discourage the rebellion. Lovett makes promises to both sides, swearing peace with Colum and sending troops with Jamie. Jamie and Murtaugh attempt to whip their new men into shape, and they are joined by some of the Mackenzies, including Dougal. The battle camp brings back many memories of war for Claire. Jamie uses Claire to get information from a young English soldier about a nearby army camp. Jamie leads the Jacobites to their first victory against the English, using the fog as cover for the attack. Angus is mortally wounded in the battle. Finding themselves surrounded by redcoats, Claire pretends to be a prisoner so they can escape. She sees Hugh as they take her away. She is taken to Duke Sandringham, who is hosting Mary Hawkins. Claire recognizes his valet as one of the attackers from Paris. Turns out Sandringham was behind it and is using Claire as bait to capture Jamie. Hugh indicates to Jamie where they took Claire. Murtaugh and Jamie slip in unnoticed, and Mary kills the valet. Murtaugh executes Sandringham, fulfilling his promise. Jamie develops a new plan to avoid the Battle of Culloden, but Prince Charles gets lost. Claire attempts to help Alex, who is gravely ill, but cannot save him. Alex asks his brother Blackjack to take Mary's hand in marriage as she is pregnant with his child. Claire encourages this as it will ensure Frank's lineage. Randall seems almost human here with his brother, but nothing can change the monster we know him to be. Claire then meets with a dying Column, who tells her that Galus was not killed until after Dougal's baby was born. The child will be welcomed into the Mackenzie clan. She gives him a potion to help him pass peacefully. As the Battle of Culloden approaches, Jamie and Claire consider poisoning Prince Charles. When Dougal hears and confronts them, they're forced to kill him. Claire is pregnant again, and Jamie insists that she and the baby go back through the stones for their own safety. They reach the stones as the battle begins and say a heartbreaking goodbye. In 1968, Claire visits Scotland again with her grown daughter, Brianna. This is Claire's worst hair yet. I swear, it gets worse and worse the longer she is away from Jamie. Anyone else notice that? They meet Reverend Wakefield's adopted son, who vaguely remembers Claire. Brie is told that Frank was not her biological father, but she refuses to believe her mother's story about time travel. Claire realizes that Roger is descended from Galus and Dougal's baby. Brie meets an activist named Gillian Edgars, who speaks about Scottish independence. Claire recognizes her as Galus and tries to stop her from going through the stones, knowing how it will end. They arrive too late, but Brie sees her disappear and finally believes her mom's story. Roger shares his discovery that Jamie did not die in the Battle of Culloden. In 1948, Claire and Frank attempt to resume their life together, and she gives birth to a daughter, Brianna. Back in 1746, Jamie has a standoff with Randall and finally kills him. The Jacobites are beaten and many hide away in a farmhouse. The Redcoats begin executing them, but Jamie is spared because of a mercy Jamie previously showed the officer's brother. He is instead sent to Brock Turok. Claire continues to struggle with Frank, Jamie's memory a constant block between them. She decides to go to medical school. Jamie is back at Lollybrock, but lives in hiding in a cave nearby. Jenny and Ian are constantly harassed by Redcoats. After a redcoat cuts off Fergus's hand, Jamie realizes he must put a stop to it. He arranges for a reluctant Jenny to turn him in so she can claim the reward and the harassment will finally end. Claire graduates medical school and becomes a surgeon. After Bree graduates high school, Frank asks for a divorce, wanting to marry his longtime mistress, but tragically, he dies in a car crash. Jamie is in Ardsmere Prison and becomes a leader for the inmates known as MacDuh. He befriends the new governor, Lord John Gray, who develops a little crush on Jamie. When the prison is closed, most inmates, including Murtaugh, are sent to the colonies in America, but John arranges for Jamie to work at the Hellwater estate. Claire, Bree, and Roger continue to research what happened to Jamie, but the trail ends at Ardsmere. At Hellwater, Jamie takes care of the horses and through blackmail ends up siring a child, William, with one of the daughters. When Willie's parents die, the younger sister adopts him and marries John Gray. Jamie bonds with Willie, but as the boy grows older, they are too much alike and Jamie is forced to leave. Roger finally finds a clue to Jamie's story and Brie tells her mother she should go back to Jamie. After making proper preparations this time, she tearfully says goodbye to Brianna and travels through the stones once more. In 1765, she makes her way to Edinburgh and finds a print shop she believes Jamie works at. 
and when she finds him, he passes out at the sight of her. Claire and Jamie are blissfully reunited. They share information about Brianna and Willie, and Claire meets Fergus, all grown up and one-handed, and nephew young Ian. She's a little unnerved by the fact that Jamie leads a different life now, smuggling alcohol, printing underground materials, and living in a brothel. An intruder attacks Claire. She defends herself and accidentally causes a head injury, but is not able to save him. Ian shows up looking for his son, and Jamie lies. Claire attempts to help Margaret, a young woman with headaches and outbursts whose brother claims she is a seer. Young Ian is staying at the print shop and is about to lay with a young lady when another intruder attacks. The print shop is set on fire during the brawl, and Jamie barely manages to get young Ian out alive. Jamie takes Claire and young Ian back to Lollybrock, failing this whole trip to mention that he is in fact married again, and it's to Leary, of all people. With tensions high, Leary accidentally shoots Jamie, who explains to Claire that he only married Leary because of her daughters. Claire also has tension with Jenny, who can't understand her sudden disappearance and reappearance. Ned Gowan helps Jamie with the legal matter of having two wives, and negotiates a settlement for Leary. Jamie knows of a treasure hidden away that would pay his debts. Because Jamie is injured, they send young Ian to swim to the tiny island and retrieve it. Jamie and Claire are forced to helplessly watch as pirates show up and kidnap him. They quickly figure out that the ship is headed for Jamaica and board a trading ship going that direction. After takeoff, Fergus reveals that he has smuggled Leary's daughter Marsily aboard and plans to marry her. A British ship seeks aid because the crew has fallen ill. Claire goes to help, diagnosing it as typhoid fever, and teaches them how to stop the spread. But the ship sails away with Claire still on board. Claire discovers the captain of the British ship, Leonard, knows Jamie's true identity and plans to arrest him in Jamaica. Her first escape attempt fails, but she manages to jump overboard and float away on some barrels. Back on the trading ship, Jamie is thrown in the brig for his insolence toward the captain but Fergus manages to negotiate his freedom. Claire washes up on shore and succumbs to the heat. She awakens in the home of Father Fogden, a priest who ran away to get married. He's a bit out there, dude talks to a coconut, but does help her recover and tells her of a cave where people have been known to disappear. The trading ship weathers a severe storm where they lose the captain. They pull to shore to make repairs and Claire is able to signal Jamie and they are reunited. Father Fogden performs the marriage for Fergus and Marsily before they set sail for Jamaica. We see that young Ian is being held prisoner by none other than Galus, who I guess bathes in blood now and has tea that makes him tell the truth about the treasure and his uncle Jamie. When the crew reach Jamaica, Claire is immediately abashed by the slave market and fights with the sellers. Jamie buys the man in question, Temraire. Jamie is surprised to find out the new governor is John Gray. Claire sees Galus, surprised that she is alive, and Galus offers to help them search for Ian. They are invited to a ball where Claire recognizes Margaret, who has a vision and says that a king will rule Scotland again when a 200-year-old child is killed. Fergus spots Captain Leonard and warns Jamie. After Temrir gathered information from the kitchens and learns that Galus has Ian, they set him free. They take off for her villa when Leonard stops them and arrests Jamie. Governor Gray is able to free Jamie after Captain Leonard is unable to produce any proof of his crimes. Claire searches Galus' house, but is caught and taken to her. Claire shares her story, and Galus figures that Brianna must be the child from the prophecy. She plans to sacrifice Ian to travel to the future and kill Bree. They rescue Ian, but Claire ends up killing Galus to stop her. They board the ship and sail away, but another storm hits, and they are washed up on the shores of the American colonies. Jamie and Claire decide to sell gemstones to pay for passage back to Scotland. While traveling, they meet a man named Stephen Bonnet and help him escape execution. After reuniting with many fellow Scots, they decide to stay, and Ian adopts a dog named Rollo. Jamie, Claire, and young Ian travel to visit Jamie's Aunt Jocasta, but are attacked by bandits led by Stephen Bonnet. The thieves take everything, including Claire's wedding ring, and kill Leslie, Jamie's friend from Ardsmere. Jamie's aunt lives on a large plantation known as River Run. They arrive and we meet the tenacious Jocasta Mackenzie Cameron, a formidable woman even without her sight. Jocasta talks to Jamie about becoming her heir and taking over River Run, but Claire is not cool with the idea of owning slaves. 
Ian meets expert woodsman John Quincy Myers. When a slave attacks an overseer, Claire stops his punishment and attempts to treat his wounds. A mob demands the slave be given over for proper punishment, but Claire helps him die peacefully instead. Claire and Jamie decide to leave River Run and find a place of their own. Claire gets lost in the woods and finds a human skull with modern fillings. She sees a Native American ghost that leads her back to Jamie. They stumble on a beautiful plot of land and decide to settle there, naming it Fraser's Ridge. In the future, Bree and Roger are dating, and he decides to propose, but Bree isn't ready for it, and they break up. Jamie accepts an offer from Governor Tryon, gifting them the land they chose in exchange for loyal service to the crown. At Fraser's Ridge, they have disputes with the local native tribe and are terrorized by a bear. Myers offers to help communicate with the natives. One night, Jamie is attacked by the bear and kills it before realizing it is actually a man. Meeting with the natives, Jamie earns the nickname Bear Killer and is told that the man was banished for horrible behavior. Claire befriends and learns from the tribe's wise healer, Otawehi. The two groups come to an agreement to live peacefully with each other. In the future, Roger discovers the settlement called Fraser's Ridge and tells Bree her parents found each other. Bree travels to Scotland without telling him and learns that they died in a fire at Fraser's Ridge, so she travels through the stones at Cragna Dune to warn them. Claire finds herself caught in a fight between a local family and the natives over the rights of a nearby river. She loses friends from both sides of the feud. Jamie runs into Murtog, who is now working as a blacksmith but secretly leading a group of insurgents known as the Regulators. John Gray visits the ridge, bringing Jamie's son William with him. Gray is taken ill with the measles and Claire tends to him while Jamie takes the chance to bond with William. Bree travels through Scotland but is injured. Leary takes her in, but when she learns who her parents are, she plots to have her arrested for witchcraft. Spotting a pattern here. Leary's daughter takes Bree to Lollybrock before her mother can act. Ian helps Bree find passage to the colonies, and she helps a young lady named Lizzie gain passage as well. Roger follows Bree through the stones and quickly finds passage on a ship run by none other than Stephen Bonnet. Roger and Brianna find each other and decide to marry in a hand fasting ceremony. After consummating the marriage, they fight and Roger leaves. Bree sees her mother's ring in a card game, and Bonnet uses it to lure her alone and brutally defile her. Claire and Jamie meet George Washington and send Fergus to warn Murtaugh of a trap set for the regulators. Brianna finally meets her father, not quite the meat cute she had in mind, but touching all the same. Claire is ecstatic to see her daughter, but she can tell something is wrong. Bree tells her about the assault, and Claire tells Jamie. Roger was forced to finish his work with Bonnet, but manages to make his way to Fraser's Ridge. Lizzie mistakenly IDs him as Bree's attacker, and Jamie beads him to a bloody pulp and sends him off with Ian. At the house, Claire finds her wedding ring and realizes that the attacker was actually Stephen Bonnet. Ian trades Roger to the Mohawk, who keep him captive. Bree is pregnant and struggles with what to do about it. When she learns about Jamie's actions, she realizes that the man must have been Roger, and Jamie learns that Bonnet was her attacker. Murtaugh takes Bree to River Run for her safety, while Jamie, Claire, and young Ian go to find Roger and bring him back. Roger escapes for a short time and stumbles across the traveling stone before being recaptured. Jocasta arranges a dinner party of eligible young men, hoping to find Bree a husband who can take care of her. John Gray is among the guests, and Bree explains her predicament. She accidentally learns that he is gay and proposes an arrangement that could suit them both until Roger's return. Murtaugh and Fergus capture Bonnet, but then they are caught by the authorities. Bree has Gray take her to confront Bonnet, who is now incarcerated. She tells him she forgives him, but that the baby will never know who he is. Fergus liberates Murtaugh, and they blow up the jail to cover their tracks. Bonnet's fate is unknown, which we all know means he'll be back. Roger befriends another captive of the Mohawks, who is to be slowly burnt at the stake. Roger escapes, but returns to accelerate the fire and make his new friend's death quicker. Jamie, Claire, and Ian find the Mohawk, and after a scuffle, young Ian offers himself as a replacement for Roger. On the way to River Run, Claire tells Roger what has happened to Bree. Bree gives birth to a healthy baby boy, but she is devastated when Jamie and Claire arrive alone. But soon after, Roger shows up and declares his love. 
Jamie receives orders from Governor Tryon to find and kill the leader of the Regulators, Murtog. Brianna and Roger celebrate their marriage at Fraser's Ridge, with many attendees including Aunt Jocasta and Governor Tryon. Jocasta makes Jemmy the heir to River Run, suggesting that it is extra incentive to marry Bree, and is delighted by Roger's indignant reaction. Tryon reminds Jamie of his order to find Murtog and expects him to raise a militia to fight the Regulators. The Scots there for the wedding make pledges to serve in Jamie's militia, and he makes Roger a captain. Secretly, he tells Murtog to flee, which he does, but not before saying a proper goodbye to Jocasta. Paired with an overenthusiastic Lieutenant Knox, Jamie begins to question if he is on the right side of history. Tired of losing people to preventable ailments, Claire writes a pamphlet under the pseudonym Dr. Rawlings. She also asks Marsali to be her apprentice and learn medicine. Ridge resident Joe asks Jamie for help freeing his twin brother Kezi from indentured servitude under an abusive man. They find that the man is helpless and being tortured by his wife Franny, who is also in labor. Claire delivers the baby that is obviously not the husband's. Jamie Mercy kills the husband and Claire takes the baby with them. Roger takes the militia to Brownsville, where they have beef with Isaiah Morton, a member of the militia, over a romantic entanglement. Roger makes a debacle of things, but Jamie is able to clear it up when he arrives. Claire is surprised to hear the women of the village talking about using Dr. Rawlings' advice to prevent unwanted pregnancy. She finds a young mother who recently lost her child to adopt the baby. Jamie has Roger take Claire and the twins back to the ridge. Claire has managed to grow penicillin and uses it while performing tonsillectomies on the twins. Lieutenant Knox discovers Jamie's relationship to Murtaugh, and in a fit of panic, he chokes him to death. Jamie returns home, bringing a kitten he found along the way. Jamie and Claire attend Jocasta's wedding to Duncan Innes, a sweet and considerate man. They make an arrangement to smuggle whiskey with Philip Wiley, a ruse to get close to Bonnet. Governor Tryon is there, and he says he's tired of waiting and tells Jamie to prepare his men for war. At the ridge, Roger and Bree are battling a grasshopper infestation. Roger uses smudge pots to smoke them out. Jamie's militia joins the British army as they prepare for battle against the Regulators. Bree hears that the battle will take place near Alamance Creek, and she remembers the name as the Spark of the American Revolution. She rides there to tell her parents that the British will win this battle. Roger volunteers to take the message to Murtaugh and try and convince him to call it all off. Roger's message doesn't work, and he runs into his ancestor. Notice he's played by Dougal? The battle begins. Isaiah Morton is brought into Claire's tent. Claire notices Isaiah was shot in the back at close range, and Lionel Brown knocks over her medical supplies and stamps on them, including her only needle. Jamie comes face to face with Murtaugh, but before they can do anything, Murtaugh is shot by one of the militia trying to protect Jamie. His godfather tells him not to be afraid, and then he dies. The battle is won, and Jamie drops the red coat to the ground. They realize that Roger is missing and find him hanging from a tree. They manage to get Roger down, and he is still alive, though his vocal cords are severely damaged. Months later on the ridge, he is still unable to speak. Young Ian returns, very changed by his time with the Mohawk. Roger and Ian go on a surveying trip and confront their traumas together. Roger his hanging, and Ian the loss of his Mohawk wife. The men are out hunting buffalo when Jamie gets bit by a snake. Roger attempts to get him back to a house, and a search party finds them. Bree uses her engineering skills to fashion a needle from one of the snake's fangs, and Claire is able to save Jamie's life. Jamie, Roger, and Ian go to meet Bonnet, part of their elaborate plan to capture him. Claire and Bree are walking on the beach when Bonnet shows up there instead. He knocks them both out, but Claire wakes up on the beach alone. Bree has been captured by Bonnet, who intends to take Jemmy and River Run for himself. Bree is rescued, and Roger gives her the choice of Bonnet's fate, and she decides he should be arrested and tried. He is sentenced to death by drowning, one of his greatest fears, and Bree shoots him. It's unclear if it's an act of mercy or revenge. Turns out Jocasta's lawyer was in on Bonnet's plan and attempts to kill her, but her faithful butler Ulysses saves her. Back at the ridge, Bree discovers Jemmy has likely inherited the ability to travel through the stones. Richard and Lionel Brown are leading a group they call the Committee of Safety. Claire tends to Lionel's leg injury, and he spots the name on her medical kit. Ian is finally told the truth about Claire, Bree, and Roger being from the future. Ulysses is hiding at the ridge before taking a job as a free man with John Gray. 
Bree and Roger decide to go back to the future. They say many tearful farewells to family and friends. Ian joins them for the journey tasked with returning the horses after they go. They touch the stones together and disappear. A quick glimpse of Bree, Roger, and Jemmy on the other side make it clear they are surprised by wherever they ended up. An explosion at the still lures all the men away from the house. Claire and Marsily are attacked. Poor little Germaine witnesses strange men take Claire. When the men return, they are able to rouse Marsily, and Jamie quickly summons his militia, preparing for a battle to get Claire back. We discover it was Lionel Brown who kidnapped Claire. He found out she was actually Dr. Rawlings and aims to discredit and punish her for advice on preventing pregnancies. What Claire goes through here is beyond any words I have to describe. If you watched it, I am sure it has stuck with you. I'll just say that she is barbarically, verbally, physically, and sexually abused repeatedly. She manages to cope by transporting herself to a dream world where she is surrounded by people she loves. One of the men turns out to be a traveler, and though he doesn't participate in the brutality, he does nothing to stop it either. We switch to Roger and Bree, who discover they are still in the same time, finding Ian nearby. They say they were both thinking of home. When they arrive back at the ridge, they find full-kilt Jamie gathering the troops. Jamie finds and raids the camp holding Claire and orders them all executed, except Brown, who is taken prisoner. Bree is waiting to welcome Claire home and begin her recovery. In the surgery room, Brown is tied down to the table. Claire and Marsley are tending to his wounds, but Claire has to leave. Marsley tells him that Claire has made an oath to do no harm, but she has taken no such oath and injects him with poison. Jamie takes Brown's body back to his brother, who doesn't seem mad, but leaves him with a vague threat. And Claire is back home and surrounded by those she loves. And that's where we end the first five seasons of Outlander.